Welcome to the Daily Devotionals podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Good afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our epistle reading for Thanksgiving Day. The epistle reading for Thanksgiving Day is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way, This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's important for us to remember when Paul is writing this. Paul is writing this in the time of the Roman Empire when there were evil leaders, evil Caesars. Nero and Caligula and men were despicable. But yet Paul encourages Timothy to pray for them. He does something similar in Romans chapter 13, but for you and for me, hearing it right here in 1 Timothy, I think is very important. We live in a nation that is very, very much divided, um, hating certain portions of the political spectrum. Some hating the left, some hating the right. And this is not where we ought to be as Christians. And so we need to take Paul's view. And Paul's view is prayer. And so that's where we start. And and think about what he uses here. There's four different words he uses in regard to prayer In verse 1, he says, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. In the beginning of verse 2, for kings and all who are on high positions. So, you know, I had a friend of mine say that he was criticized by a member of his congregation because he prayed for a president by name. And of course, that person didn't like that name, that president. And and so it's important for you and for me to think about the fact of what is pleasing to God first and foremost. Not our own will, not political things, but what is pleasing to God. And the people who lead our nation are in need of prayers. They are human. They are therefore prone to mistakes, prone to bad choices, prone to bad ideas, prone to failure. And so as we uh, think of them, our prayers ought to be for them to make appropriate decisions, God-pleasing decisions, God-pleasing choices, God-pleasing actions. And so when we hear those words, I'm going to start from the last to the first. Thanksgivings. As we're heading toward this coming week, we thank God for a somewhat of a free nation. We thank God that we can still worship in, uh, in our worship churches and our churches without fear. And we can still gather together and pray. We can gather and pray wherever we like without fear. Many nations around the world do not have it where you can pray in public. And it's sad. People are arrested for it all the time. And some jailed and some even put to death for prayer. And it's important as we see that freedom to be thankful 
thankful not only for that freedom, but thankful that we have uh, an opportunity to participate in selecting our rulers, our leaders, and thanking that. So intercessions are praying for others, praying for their needs, praying for those leaders by name, praying for them specifically, praying, praying for them to do the right thing, praying for the people of our nation to make the right choices, praying, praying, and praying some more. Then we go to intercessions that we're praying for, not only thanking God for what he's provided, but specifically for those individuals that, that lead and rule, those individuals. We're praying for them. That's what an intercession is. Prayers for all kinds of different things, all kinds of different situations, all time kinds of um, decisions that they need to make, making and need to be made and freedoms that need to be protected. And then finally, supplications. Supplication is praying for yourself, praying that you carry out the right attitude, the right heart and mind, that you make the right decisions, that you choose the right leaders, and that you pray for God's guidance to do so. All four of those words are um, an essence of prayer that we need to remember and appreciate, especially uh, at this time of Thanksgiving, especially for our nation's leadership. And then Paul gives the reason in the second part of verse 2, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Not screaming, not protesting, not you know breaking down into mass hysteria or into personal hysterics when things don't go the way we want them to go. Peaceful, quiet, godly, and dignified. That's the way we are to be as Christians. Doing things the right way. Doing things the God-pleasing way putting ourselves in his hands and asking him to guide us as we live our lives, especially when it comes to how we live our lives in a politically charged environment. In verse 3, this is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We don't want to do anything that closes a door, shuts a window, and puts up a roadblock so someone else cannot receive the gospel, that someone else cannot benefit from the ministry of the church or the individual ministries of Christians as we share our faith and give a faithful witness for Christ. And we put up those roadblocks and we put up those um, stumbling blocks in front of people. It closes people off to the gospel, and especially in these days. So may we do things in a way that is pleasing to Christ. See, even as he faced his time before the, the chief priests and his time before Pilate, he did the very thing that Paul's describing. Peaceful, quiet, godly, dignified. And then he sacrificed his life for us to cover us with his righteousness because he did his suffering perfectly. I mean, we live for him in that same spirit, with that same mindset. He set us free from sin and death and rose to give us life. May we honor him by following his example in prayer, in life, and in conduct. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and our minds, that we would do those things that are pleasing in your sight, especially in a politically charged world. Guide us that we may honor you in our speech, 
honor you and our witness, honor you and our day-to-day living. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's devotion. And remember to live in prayer and to live out that prayer in what you do. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com. Thank you.